The research that was published is the fruits of the efforts of hundreds of scientists across the world, four continents, 36 countries, uh, tens of thousands of patients. I had the privilege of coordinating and, and leading the research, but it was a huge collaborative effort. What we found was uh, 108 uh, regions of chromosomes, uh, genes if you like, that uh, contribute risk of schizophrenia. Each one on its own contributes a very small amount of risk, so these individual findings do not predict who's going to get illness, who's not going to get illness. What they do do is uh, they give us the identity of various proteins Okay? And what, if we figure out what the proteins do, we can find out essentially what's going on in the brains or other parts of the bodies of people with schizophrenia. If you compare us, uh, the treatment of schizophrenia with the, the treatment of other, uh, many other common diseases, if treatment one doesn't work, there are different targets, different uh, ways of approaching the, the treatment. And that's really arisen because people have understood the biology of those illnesses. We don't understand the biology of schizophrenia, so the only really class of treatment that we've got, it was discovered 60 years ago and it was discovered by luck. The benefit of studying genetics is that it gives us a way into the biology, um, or the way, a way into the brain. The brain is you know, an inaccessible organ. We can't, unlike some you know, kidney disease, we can't biopsy. A, a, a bit of brain and, a, a, and have a look at what's gone wrong in, in it. You know, we need to the, this more indirect approach. So genetics gives us a way in. It gives us, a, but it also gives us a powerful tool to study how how not we call non-genetic factors the environment. I mean, to a geneticist, the environment is everything that isn't genetic. Um, it gives us a powerful tool for studying how the environment impacts. So now we can um, we can measure guess a, a, a measure of genetic risk in an individual who may or may not have developed the disorder and look how that risk impacts on development as a child um, th throughout well, development throughout the life we can look at how it impact how environmental factors interact with genetic risk in completely novel ways and this is starting to happen now so we can get a uh, use these measures of direct measures of genetic risk from DNA and look to see how they, uh, you know, how they interact with environmental factors such as um, uh, ch childhood abuse, uh, cannabis use, uh, and, and, and other non-genetic risk factors. So, you know, I don't think anyone in the field sees it as a sort of do genetic, you know, it's genetics or the environment, it's both. And as researchers, we need to be integrating these two, two approaches to understand the disorder. Ultimately, we won't understand it just by one approach. Right here, right now, today, it's not going to change your treatment. It's not going to change uh, your life. It's not going to do anything for you today, the here and the now. However, I think it should give you hope that just as you, you know, maybe if you, maybe you have schizophrenia, maybe you have a family member with schizophrenia and you listen to the radio or you read the newspapers and you see about the tremendous progress that's been made in the treatment of other diseases and you're going, what about me? What about my family? Well, this is really the foundation to, that will allow progress to be made in schizophrenia just as it's being made in all other areas of medicine.